Howdy mates, good late morning, how are we all doing? It is Wednesday, February 1st, 2023, and I figure, you know, this is a great way to uh, start a new month, right? So we're over visiting the, oh yeah, revisiting the Highlands Hammock State Park over by uh, Sebring, so we're a bit more in central Florida. And it just, it feels really good to be back because I, as I've mentioned before, ever since I was, you know, a little kid, I think I probably had to be about seven or eight years old was when I came here for the first time. It was Highlands Hammock that, it was technically my first state park that I ever been to in Florida. So it of course holds a very special place in the heart. But uh, we're kind of at the beginning of the uh, Cypress Boardwalk, which will, you know, it goes further and you get onto the catwalk over basically a swamp. However, though, that's not really the basis of why I made this video. I wanted to point out this guy right here. We've got what's known as... A royal fern. Now, the thing is, there are several uh, varieties of royal fern. So this is just one of them. You know, the, the, there's other varieties called old royal fern and even new world royal fern. Uh, point is, this is one of the only few plants that actually exist in all six continents besides Antarctica, of course. Because if that were the case, that would be extremely impressive. <laughs> but this fern is unique in the fact that it has a double pinnate arrangement. So basically what I mean by that is if you look at the uh, arrangement... So, okay, you have the main stem, right? Just follow the finger there. So double pinnate. So you can see there's two little limbs that are directly opposite of each other. And then on those limbs, you have the fronds that are also alternating. So in a sense, that's a very unique characteristic for a fern. Because that doesn't very, that doesn't really happen too often. Whereas, you know, we have another example. I believe this is... Uh, almost looks like bulblet. Quite honestly, I'm not as good with my ferns down here in Florida. But you can see that this instead has a pinnate arrangement. So instead... On the main stem, the uh, leaves are directly alternating, or they're directly opposite of each other. So, anyways, the first question that really comes to mind, a lot of fellow botanists and even those who are just interested, what is the difference between pollen and Spores. Well, here it is. You see, pollen actually is a form of a spore. But the difference is, pollen is more of like a, it's a male. It has, you know, it's associated with the male uh, reproductive aspect of seeded plants. Whereas spores, you know, with ferns or other uh, seedless vascular plants, it's most, it's just a, it's just like a haploid cell. So what I mean by haploid is there's only a single set of chromosomes that are present until it reaches for 
the female part of reproduction. But ferns, they're very versatile in terms of how they can reproduce. So this is where it gets a little more into the biological aspect of it. So ferns in general are capable of both sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction. Hold on a second. Okay, so back to what I was saying. They are indeed versatile. So, I figure since I'm already hitting uh, about six minutes, I'm going to break this up into another video. Just because if I do it all in one video, it's going to be a little too long. So, be sure to watch this video first, and then watch my part two. Alright, take care.